People who have had a stalker, how did you realize you were being stalked? Part 4. For more. Such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Count 1. This started back in 2019. My life was a bit of an unstable mess at the time, for reasons I won't get into in case the person involved in this situation comes across this post. During this turbulent time, someone I didn't know contacted me on my personal Instagram. My account wasn't private, but it had under 100 followers and I don't use tags. So, unless you knew me personally, it would be hard to just stumble across. The person who contacted me had created a new account with no identifying information and was not following anyone else. They said they were wondering if they could help me. I asked what they wanted to help me with. They said, oh, nothing bad, just help you financially. They then offered me money for nothing via cardless cash or gift cards. They insisted we'd never have to meet and that they wouldn't get angry or force me. If I said no, I refused up front, but they continued to message me and the language they used made me feel like they knew me personally and or knew my life situation was difficult. I tried to find out some identifying information to figure out who they were, asked if they knew me personally, and when they wouldn't answer my questions, I stopped responding. The following day, they sent me an essay apologizing, insisting they only wanted to help someone in need of assistance, and said they wouldn't contact me again. They proceeded to message me the next day. And the next, and the next. I didn't block them because at this point I was concerned for my safety and wanted to keep access to their messages. If I needed to contact police, I'd screenshot and sent the messages to friends. And my partner at the time was aware. After several days of nonstop messages, I told them to stop harassing me and they deleted their account. A few weeks later, they messaged me again from a brand new account. The timing made me think for sure they knew me personally, as something major had happened in my life. Again, after some back and forth of telling them to stop harassing me again, they eventually stopped contacting me. Six months later, they were back with a new account. They didn't contact me, but I noticed them watching my stories. Similar username to the last two accounts, so I just deactivated all social media accounts. When I reactivated my Instagram weeks later, I made it private, and within a couple of days, I had a follow request from a new account. I declined and reported their page as spam. That night, I received a message from an account with a similar handle as the one I'd reported. They identified themselves as the person who contacted me seven months ago. By that point, they'd created at least five new accounts to check up on me. There were limited people who were aware of my life situation when this all unfolded, and I had countless theories that made me distrust my closest friends. In the end, I narrowed down the possibilities to be an ex-colleague, though I don't know for sure. Account 2. I'd just moved out of my parents' house. I was 18, living with a boyfriend. It was a really sketchy apartment complex in a really sketchy area. But it was cheap and I wanted out of my family's house. There were two laundry units in the complex, but the one closest to our apartment had had the washers and dryers vandalized, so I would walk or drive our laundry to the other side of the complex. My first time doing laundry, there was a guy there waiting around for his laundry, being the sort of area it was. I'd already been advised not to leave laundry unattended or it might get stolen. So I waited there with my laundry, happy to have someone else to talk to. He seemed friendly, very chatty. Say it, he and his wife lived in an apartment really close to that laundry unit. I told him I lived on the other side with my boyfriend. We made conversation, and I felt happy that I'd possibly made a new friend. After a few times of doing my laundry, I realized that he would happen to show up shortly after I did to do his own laundry. At first, I figured it was just coincidence, he lives so close by, and everyone's got to do laundry. Then he told me on one of those laundry days, I saw you bring in your laundry, figured I'd just join you while you wait. He didn't have his own laundry to do. He just showed up because I was there. I thought that was odd, but tried to think of it as him just enjoying being my friend. The next few times, he showed up again without laundry just to talk to me. 
One day he showed up again while I was there. It was just us, as it often seemed to be. He started making complaints about his wife. Everyone vents about partners sometimes. He'd done it before. But this time his complaints all seemed to be sexual or affection related. I tried to just give short answers, general replies. I didn't want to leave my laundry unattended. He started getting closer to me. Eventually I was cornered. I nervously laughed, told him he needed to give me some space. Inwardly, I was panicking. He pushed me against a washing machine and began forcefully kissing me, groping me. I couldn't push him away. His breath smelled like burnt popcorn. And to this day, I can't stand the taste of any popcorn. Someone walked in, and I heard, Hey, what's going on? My attacker quickly backed off, said, Everything's fine. He looked at me and said, Talk to you later and left. I was too shocked and embarrassed to say anything to this random new person. I gathered my still damp clothes and left. After that, I started taking our laundry to a laundromat away from the complex. It was more work and more expensive, but I didn't want to see the guy. Again, out of embarrassment and shame, I didn't tell my boyfriend. I just said made some excuse about the apartment laundry machines being shit. I didn't see the laundry guy for a while. He didn't know which apartment I lived in, just that I was on the opposite side of the complex. One day, I was home alone, and I heard a knock on the door. I looked out the blinds, and it was him. He knocked again, waited a little longer, then left. Somehow, he found out where I was, probably saw my car. After that, though, I never saw or heard from him again. I'd gotten a different vehicle not long after that, so maybe he figured I'd moved. Account 3. I found out she was truly stalking me when I went on a family vacation to a beach four hours from home. We looked down from the balcony, and my name is written in the sand with a threatening, I know your room number. When we got home, I tried to press charges, and the cop wouldn't take me seriously. He kept asking if I was a lesbian and had been in a relationship with her. He didn't believe me when I repeatedly said no, absolutely not, so he refused to press any charges. Account 4. She was screaming my name outside my apartment window at 1 a.m. She wrote letters to my bosses at work to try to get me fired. She called repeatedly until I stopped answering my phone, at which point she tried to fill my answering machine with Vivaldi. Not realizing it cut off after about one minute, she waited for me outside work because we had to talk. Still can't enjoy Vivaldi. Account 5. If cyberstalking counts, I've been steadily experiencing that off and on since 2017. My friend met some dude from Europe on Twitter. They dated and remained friends after they broke up. My friend fell into addiction issues, and this guy would message me out of concern for her. He and I eventually became friends online over it all. But things took a turn when he started saying inappropriate, flirty, sexual things to me. Even though I had a serious long-term boyfriend, who is now my fiancé, I would tell him to fuck off, but he'd find his way back into my DMs because he would have something to tell me about my friend. She was more honest with him about the things she was going through, drug-related, than with me. Things kind of came to a head, though, when my friend and I fell out due to her addiction, and he had pushed his creepy behavior to the max with me. At one point in one of his trips to America, presumably to visit her, she lived an hour south of me. He came to my city and had found my old Reddit account and messaged it saying he lusted for me and would be passing through my city to get to L.A. and wanted to meet up for coffee to talk. It was bullshit because you don't go through my city to get on the highway to L.A. from where he had visited my friend and flown in from. So that was super creepy. I deleted my Reddit account over that one. He tried to make alt Twitter accounts to message me, so I deleted my Twitter account, blocked him on Facebook and Instagram, didn't hear much from him after that. I eventually made a new Twitter account with a completely diff name, and the motherfucker still found it and made fake Twitter accounts and would tweet nasty, Naomi ya komu sawa tekina ko tiaro, sexual, shit to me. I finally got my fiancé to message him and threaten him, and he backed off. Sadly, my friend lost her battle with to her addiction and passed away in 2019. He messaged me on Instagram. I told him I wasn't going to be his shoulder to cry on and to stop stalking me. Been pretty radio silent since, because he finally got a girlfriend. 
He tried to follow me from some photography Insta account he made, but I blocked it. My fiancé went to message him, but he had already blocked my fiancé from the photography account, which was kind of funny to me. Unfortunately, two weeks ago, he made another Twitter account and sent me this long message about how he wants to talk to apologize for his behavior and explain himself, blah, blah, blah. I've blocked it, but I'm at my wit's end. IDK what to do, and I feel like it's not fair that I have to keep deleting my socials to escape, and it's mentally draining and a little scary and violating. Account 6. This isn't me, but this is a woman I know who has been a close acquaintance of mine since 2009. From 2009, 2011, she worked at this local food parlor where she would outside and serve fast food to people who eat in their cars. It's a very unique place in my area. Anyway, dating back to Duck09, when she was a senior in high school, she noticed this man sitting in a blue Ford car. She told me he was about 21 years old. He wasn't quite at the parlor, but in a parking lot nearby. Then he drove off. The problem was she noticed this same man doing it periodically. Let's say once a week for about 30 minutes each time. And according to her co-workers, he would only do this when she worked that day. If she or anyone else she worked with tried to meet him in the car, he would quickly drive off. Then, in 2012-ish, 2013-ish, until 2014-ish, somewhere in that range, she worked at a local Texas Roadhouse restaurant store. It wasn't too far from where she worked, as a waitress. To her shock, she, and once again, other co-workers, noticed that same blue Ford with the same man sitting in it. According to her, from what she could see through his windshield, he looked like a basic, clean-cut white man at about average size. This time, she contacted the police, but they told her there was nothing they could do, because he was technically just parked in a public parking lot. Once again, co-workers tried sneaking up on him, but he was always on guard and would drive away. Then, from around 2015, 2018, she moved to a city about 40 minutes away and had a store managing position at a clothing store in the area. It was some local place. She saw him again in that same blue Ford about once a week, sometimes less frequent. She told me the creepiest part is, is she quit updating her Facebook profile and never put any details. Yet, he was still figuring out where she worked. Once again, he would only stay for a little bit at a time and drove away, and he always made sure he was in a public parking lot. Fast forward to present day. She now has her own career doing something I won't share on the internet, just in case her stalker sees it. I've asked her about it as recent as 2021 on Facebook, and she told me she hasn't seen him since she was working at the clothing store. She also told me she works in a very secluded area, and he would be easy to spot. She told me to this day she has no idea how he kept figuring out where she worked and no idea who he was. He consistently kept it up for almost a decade. And the worst part is, probably never did anything technically illegal. Her story gives chills down my spine. Account 7. Don't know if this qualifies. But in high school, there was this girl who always seemed to be nearby. During a marching band exhibition... I looked up in the bleachers and saw her maniac eyes tracking me across the football field. She was intense and creepy, sometimes downright scary. We've been married for 22 years. Account 8. When I was 14 and it was end of school year, me and my friends went to McDonald's. My friends finished theirs food, and I didn't because I'm a slow eater, so I stayed there sitting and eating my meal for extra 10 minutes. Then I saw a red car stopping next to me, and I saw that the driver took a picture of me, so I wrote down his license plate and car model. When I was walking to a bus stop, I saw the car passing by me, and the driver was looking at me. When I got home, I told my mom about this, and she decided that we're going to go to police station and report this. Investors were asking me a lot of questions about that day, like what happened, what did the driver look like, etc. They then called us in the next day with camera footages showing the car literally stalking me. They then ran the plate and arrested the man that took the picture of me. Turns out he was working in a group of people that were kidnapping kids. Luckily, they only managed to kidnap three kids that were later found in a stable condition. All of this wasn't in media, so when I tell my friends about this, they think I'm lying, but I'm not. Account 9. My ex, i.e. my baby's daddy. I left because I was physically and emotionally abused. 
He knows where I work and all. One time, I got off work and went to a store. Then when I was driving and making a turn, his car was next to me. I thought he just wanted to talk, so I went to an empty parking lot. He wanted me to go out the car, but I said we can talk even if I'm in the car, because I'm scared he's going to hurt me. Then yes, shit happened. He put his hands inside the halter open window, unlocked the door, and pulled me out of the car, forcefully pulling my hair. I'm lazy to type, maybe Emma tell the rest of the story after. Still makes me nervous when I think of everything after three years. Account 10. It's the usual story of a guy who started out nice and funny, but later showed red flag of being unhealthy attached to me from a young age. We used to be childhood friends, but we grew apart. I had no clue he was obsessed with me. We chatted for a while, and once I realized the red flags, I flat out rejected him, but he insisted, so I blocked him. He made 50 Facebook accounts and lived in my filtered massages for months. I still blocked every account just to show him I'm not playing or even entertaining the idea. He started following me on the streets trying to talk. I got really scared and nervous and altered my usual routes until I was fed up and called my brother-in-law to ask for help, and he kind of threatened my stalker's mother that he'll make life hell for them in our neighborhood. The guy stopped harassing me, and shortly after they moved away. Account 11. So, I lived in a small Midwestern town at this time, with my grandparents. When it began, I was 21. My sister, who lived with us, was 20, and my then, GF, was 22, and spent a lot of time at the house with us. It began when my GF and I had gone for a drive, and she pulled up on the curb to drop me off before driving home. There were three or four trees on one side of the house, and I saw the silhouette of a man standing in the tree line, stocky, tall, and wearing a ball cap. I sat in the car, tinted windows, so he couldn't see us for a while before deciding to just sprint to the front door and tell my grandparents someone was creeping in the yard. My grandpa told me that one of my friends had just left the house, drunk, and maybe stopped in the tree, lined to pee he could get home through or backyard. I didn't think it looked like him. But I had a history of being a little paranoid, so I let it go. The next time he was seen, about a week later, I think, I was up late, alone, on my computer in the living room. My favorite recliner sat in front of but facing away from, a big picture window with sheer curtains that sat directly over the long driveway, I got out of my chair to get something to drink and saw something out the window from the corner of my eye. When I turned to look, I saw a stocky, tall man wearing a ball cap running down the driveway to the street. I went and woke up my grandpa, but he thought it might have been one of his renters. The man his question was socially inappropriate and had a history of doing weird stuff, a few months previously, he had come to our house and taken my grandpa's truck. He always left the keys in the vehicles because grandpa had lent it to him once, so he thought it was okay. I didn't think it looked like him either, but again, history of paranoia. So next time he was at the house was just two days later. Again, up late on my computer in my favorite recliner, the living room shared a wall with the attached garage. I heard some noises in the garage but thought a raccoon or a squirrel had gotten in. Then, I heard a human cough. I audibly gasped and ran to wake Grandpa. He got his gun, ran to the garage, and saw nothing. This time, he scolded me. I had a habit of reading, watching scary things while staying up late. He thought I had worked myself up. He did lock the doors from the garage to outside, though I talked to my sister. Her bedroom was in the basement, and she said her dog had been acting strangely. He was a very well-behaved boy, friendly towards everyone and pretty much everything. But she was hearing weird noises here and there outside her window, and when she did, her dog was growling. She thought it was strange, but thought that maybe he was just overprotective at night. She didn't see anything after all. When I told her what I'd experienced, she agreed to keep a closer eye on things. The next time, my GF was staying the night at my house. About a week and a half later, I told her about what had happened, but she thought my sister and I were being dramatic. Bad things don't happen here, was the general consensus. Whenever she stayed, she liked to open the bedroom window over the backyard to let the breeze in as she slept, I begged her not to this night, and after some back and forth, she agreed. When I fell asleep, though, she opened it anyway. 
She woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't figure out why. She rolled over in bed and found herself face to face with a stocky, tall man wearing a ball cap, stood right outside my bedroom window, and staring in, she yelled out, jumped up and shut the window, and I ran to wake Grandpa again. My sister was still awake, heard my GF, and came upstairs to see what was going on. She said her dog had been growling again. Grandpa took his gun and went outside. He found muddy footprints outside of both mine and my sister's bedroom windows. But my grandma talked him out of calling the cops, stating he was a peeping Tom, and that it was harmless. We should just make sure we weren't undressed in front of unobscured windows. My grandpa did, though, essentially set a curfew for my sister, my GF, and I. He agreed to wait up each night until everyone who would be there was home. We didn't see or hear from him for some time after that. We thought we were safe. We weren't. About two weeks after the window incident, my sister and I were up late studying. We decided we were hungry, and there was no junk food in the house, so we were going to drive to the local McDonald's. We took her dog with us, because she often bought him his own chicken nuggets, and he loved car rides. We got home, pulled into the driveway, and finished the song we were listening to. Then, we decided to go inside, as we were walking up the long driveway, Diesel leading the way, then my sister, then me, I heard behind me what sounded like footsteps stepping on crunchy leaves. Before I could turn around, Diesel started snarling and growling and jumped behind me. My sister yelled, run, and we did. I could hear Diesel snarling behind me and the sound of the footsteps picking up. We got onto the steps and my sister yelled for the dog, getting him inside and locking the door but not before my sister saw a tall, stocky man wearing a ball cap trying to kick Diesel. We sat at the kitchen table, crying, trying to catch our breath. Diesel was not catching his, though. He kept running into the living room, growling and running back to the kitchen to check on us. My sister woke Grandpa, and he called the cops. The man was gone by then, but the cops agreed to patrol the area. Thank God that was the end. We never saw or heard from him again, but it still freaks me out to be out and about after dark at my grandparents'.